Hey there gang, this is part two of a comic book unboxing video. I will link part one in the description down below. But as always, I have no idea what is in this box. So far, it's been a little mix of everything. Some silver and bronze DC, some bronze Marvel, some Silver Age Archie adventure comics, and, and even a, a couple of Dells. So who knows what else we will find here in part two. But if you like comic books, stick around. We're going to have some fun. Son of Sat? Oh, I'm Satin. <laughs> Son of Satan. Let's try that. <laughs> uh, I, this is his first appearance, the ominous origin issue. So Marvel Spotlight number 12. Amazing Spider-Man 107. We're back to having two books per bag here. There's 111. 63. I think this is the first... What's his name? Blackie Drago. This is the first second vulture, I think. <laughs> there have been about 20 different vultures. There is uh, number 45, the lizard. Number 83, the schemer. Number 84, Kingpin Strikes Back. 88, the arms of Dr. Octopus. Fighting all on their own. Here's a classic cover, number 106. All right, next stack. Oh, I like this book at the top of this next stack. Where do you see it? You'll like it too. Black Goliath, number one. And, <laughs> you know, everybody makes fun of Power Girl's boob window, but nobody ever comments on Black Goliath's ab window. And it's it's that's just a ridiculous cutout on that costume. Why why would anybody make a costume like that? We had Black Goliath uh, in the movies there, uh, and uh, it just it would have been fun to see a flashback in the movie of him actually in action, twenty five feet tall with his giant um, ab window. <laughs> Mister Miracle number one, nice looking book too. That'll do well. Justice League of America 19. We've got all the Justice Leaguers and their civilian IDs down here. Flash number 119. And number 120. Kind of an early kid flash there where he was still looking like a mini-me flash. This, if you're not familiar, this... This big fold down the middle. Now, sometimes the book is just, you know, some kid folded it, and this looks in rough enough shape that maybe that's the case. But sometimes you'll get a book that is pristine, other than than this fold that goes through every page. And that's that's called a subscription fold. And uh, back in the day when, you know, somebody had a subscription to a comic book and it was sent to them through the mail, it would actually be folded in half because nobody, nobody thought twice about folding up a comic book, not any more than they would about folding up a newspaper. And it was um, put in a brown paper wrapper, and that was how it was mailed. So it, I guess so it would fit in mailboxes. So, uh, yeah, that's what that is. This book was a, this was a, a, a big, big speculator book at the time when DC brought back the original Captain Marvel. They no longer had rights to the name, so they called him Shazam. It wasn't too long after this debuted, and it might even have been because it was coming that this book was brought out. I'm not sure, but there was a, a Shazam, I won't say cartoon, but a, a live-action Saturday morning show, which I loved as a kid. And oh, <laughs> the uh, DC Universe app, before it got shut down, had pretty much everything ever done on film for uh, DC Comics, apart from the Adam West TV show. Uh, and so the original uh, episodes of the Shazam show were on there, and they don't hold up very well, unfortunately. Uh, but I remember at the, as a kid, I loved, 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 loved that show. But anyway, I'm not sure if uh, if this book came out because they knew the show was coming. Probably not. I don't think the show came out until maybe 76 or 7, and I believe this book is 72 or 3. I'll have to look up that dating. 
But anyway, the story I started to tell is that this book, uh, a lot of lot of speculator interest in this book uh, at the time. And so this book really didn't sell for much for a lot of years, like decades, just because there were so many of them in the marketplace. It didn't sell all that well, but people had bought up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of issues. Uh, so it was a very high circulation run. And this series only lasted, I think, about 36 issues, something like that. And you know, the early issues were by C.C. Beck, the original uh, Captain Marvel sh- slash sh- the original Captain Marvel slash. Sh- <laughs> it's hard to say. I've tried twice now. Let's ch- <laughs> cut and take again. <laughs> The original Captain Marvel slash Shazam creator. You try saying slash Shazam. It's not easy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this book this book does do well now. That that will go for, you know, even at this grade, this is kind of a mid grade copy. This this should go for, you know, forty bucks. But you could hardly give away a Shazam number one for a lot of years. Superman number 120, The Day Superman Married, there's another familiar trope. And poor Lois is sad, I've lost Superman forever. A <laughs> little uh, paper shear here, but here's Superman 94, wow. And again, JP from the JP collection. Superman number 116, The Mechanized Superman. Huh. Did this one have two in it? No, it didn't, but this one does. Giant Bug, JP Collection, number 110. This is the same guy from Action Comics number one, I think. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) That dummy is not fooling anybody, Superman. What is this? Okay. Oh, wow. This is a, uh, I think this is a Mexican book. NO3, so isn't that when you have the upside down exclamation point, isn't that a Spanish thing? Convicto sounds Spanish, maybe it's Italian? Recre- oh, Mexico, yeah, so it is Spanish. This is a Mexican comic book, wow, neat. Some little hooligan, though, has taken a pencil and colored in the word balloon and colored in all of this costume. Uh, t- costume well I, I i i guess a i guess a prison uniform is a kind of costume here is the jp collection again number 103 cosmo the great back in the early uh, early detective comics back in the 30s and 40s there was a uh, a cosmo was he called the great as well there was a cosmo detective cosmo the master of disguise or something like that JP Collection, (laughs) JPT. What is that T supposed to be? I guess that's just a, these little people have T-shaped hallways, I guess. Huh, the midget menace from outer space. Well, you couldn't, you couldn't have a book titled that today, could you? It'd have to be the little person menace from outer space. The doomed scarecrow, flash number 118. There's two books in here. It's a coverless 115. World's Finest Comics, number 87. Number 77, JP Collection. Wow, 69. So this is, uh, I think World's Finest was quarterly, maybe bi-monthly, JP Collection. But it was a, it was a giant book for a lot of years. And you would have these Superman, Batman covers that really, you know, they they were just these fanciful things, kind of like this, Superman, Batman, manning a uh, a lemonade stand. Or is it, oh, no, 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 no. It's a three-card Monty thing, but it's honest because Superman and Batman (laughs) are watching over it, and Robin, too. But anyway, the uh, the stories inside would have, you know, nothing to do with the cover. And in fact, Superman and Batman had their own stories. It wasn't until um, uh, the book shrank down in size, and I think that was uh, either as a result of, of 
trying to keep the price down. Uh, so they had to cut some pages in order to still produce it at the same price. Or if it was paper rationing. I can't remember the reason that World's Finest shrunk down in size. Could have been a combination of the above. But anyway, rather than sacrifice one of these other features, you know, there was tomahawk and green, arrow, and there's probably more in here as well. Uh, they they combined Superman and Batman into one story. So that's that's the origin of the world's finest team. It was just a it was just a convention because the book you know been cut down in size, and they uh, DC couldn't afford to to have them each in their own separate story anymore. Showcase number seventy five. That's the first appearance of Hawk and Dove. With Hawk and Dove looking very archetypical of their characters. It's a Steve Ditko book. The late, great Steve Ditko. Another one from the JP Collection, Superboy number 46. That's not a cannonball we shot out. It's Clark Kent. No, it's Superboy. I wonder if he'll make the connection that Clark Kent is Superboy. Superboy number 47. Superboy meets Superman. Another common trope. Superboy getting spanked. <laughs> Ouch, my hand. <laughs> That's funny. And, and of course, this is, uh, you know, in an era when you it would not be uncommon for the principal to smack the kid around. <laughs> Spare the rod, spoil the child. That's a problem with millennials. They didn't get spanked in high school enough. The Rebel Superdog. And again, Crypto. It took him a while to sort of nail down Crypto to make him look like a real dog. He, he looked very cartoony in a lot of his early appearances. Uh, Lana's looking hot here. She was frumpy on that earlier cover, but she's, she's okay there. She's okay here. Yeah, I like redheads. <laughs> uh, Mighty Boy. You know... And this is something you would expect Grant Morrison or somebody to do, to have uh, Superman or Superboy face off against all of these superhero from another planet that he faced as Superboy all these all those times. I mean, there was Mighty Boy, there was Power Boy, there was, you know, we saw, we saw Titan Boy. Um, most of them were, there was Mars Boy, Mars Boy was a, a big one. Uh, and, and they were normally in, sometimes they had their own crypto, uh, analog, but they were, sometimes they were, you know, he, just heroes from other worlds. Sometimes they were villains, but most often they were, they were rival peers. So it would be, I think there's two books in here as well. Um, uh, but the other one isn't turned around, but it would be kind of fun to, you know, bring back all of those, all of these kind of one-off characters in this big kind of army trying to take down Superman for for whatever reason because they believe Superman to be who you know to become evil or something. Well this is interesting. Huh. That's a weird messed up idea. Superboy is giving the Kents his heat vision. And of course at, at this point he didn't have heat vision. Uh, the uh, the heat was uh, a byproduct of his x-ray vision. It took them a while to decide that X-ray vision and heat vision were two different things. I'm kind of yakking. <laughs> I think this is her only appearance. Kali, Crypto's super sweetheart. <laughs> With the TV screen dinosaur. <laughs> Kryptonian dinosaur. Ah, uh, now this. This this is a treat of uh, of mine. Because, uh, you know, as you may know, I'm a big Legion of Superheroes fan. So this is technically the 10th appearance of the Legion of Superheroes. It's it's really just a, a Chameleon Boy appearance. And this never gets reprinted in any of the archival collections. Uh, anytime that uh, DC puts together a, a reprint of uh, old Legion stories, they always skip this one. Probably because in most of it, Chameleon Boy is disguised as... I forget if he's posing as Clark or Superboy, one or the other. And, you know, it's that it's that thing where, you know, again, another common trope where Superman or Superboy gets help from some super pal in order to fool Lena or Lois by having Clark and Superman appear in the same place at the same time. 
with somebody posing as one of the one of the pair there. So Chameleon Boy, most of the issue he's descri- he's disguised as again I forget if it's Clark or Superboy, and he only appears as himself in like the final couple of panels. But it, to me, it counts because he's pivotal to the plot of the story. The story doesn't happen without his participation, uh, and so uh, yeah. Yeah, this is actually, I think it is listed in price guides like Overstreet as the 10th Legion of Superheroes appearance, but never included in collections. You also can note by the kind of weird funky 12 here that doesn't seem to quite fit in that box just right. I believe that's the first 12 cent issue. The first month of 12 cent issues, uh, the price tag just, it, it doesn't look quite like the later ones. Here's Superboy 110, Superman 143, Bizarro versus Frankenstein, or who he thinks is Frankenstein. Is there another book in there? No, it's just a spine roll. Superman 126. Now, is this, no, this isn't the first Lori Lamaris appearance. It's just an appearance of Lori Lamaris when Superman turned into a merman so he could go be with her and break poor Lois's heart. I've lost him forever. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the first appearance of the son of Bizarro. Superman number 140. Here's 145, the interplanetary circus with... Uh, Heat Miser and Freeze Miser <laughs> from the old Rankin Bass cartoon. This is another uh, early Legion of Superheroes appearance that, and you see the 12 is, is fills out that box now. Um, this is another one that always gets skipped in the uh, reprint collections. Uh, and it, it shouldn't because it's an early, early appearance of the Legion. And uh, in this one, again, they're pivotal to the plot. What happens is uh, Superman is confronted by these robot duplicates of all his pals, and he has to try and figure out who it is uh, who is controlling these robots. And it turns out it's the Legion. They've sent the robot. You know, spoiler, you know, <laughs> I don't want to spoil this for you. This you know, sixty-year-old comic book. Uh, the Legion has sent these uh, robots back in time to uh, play. Well, not really play a prank, but. Uh, just to, it's some celebration, some anniversary that they're celebrating. And they would do that from time to time. They would send something dumb back in time to create a puzzle for Superman to, or Supergirl to solve um, by way of celebrating some anniversary. But again, it's a very early Legion of Superheroes appearance that is never included in any of the uh, reprint collections, probably because they only actually appear on like the last page or two. But again, they're pivotal to the plot of the story. The story doesn't happen without them. Very cartoony looking uh, Kryptonian space dragon. Superman number 151. This is Superman 155. And uh, I think that's a real life wrestler. Raka or somebody. It's, it's either this one or some other one where Superman teams up with a, a real life wrestler. And this is... This is uh, back during the era when wrestling was sort of semi-legitimate. It wasn't the kind of um, entertainment show that it is today, and has been for many decades. It was still a, a fairly legitimate sport. 155, there's two issues in there. What's the other one? Is it something special? It's the uh, Mixtoflix Banana Boat. And again, I... Because that's how I said it when I was a kid. And even though there's no F in it, I still say Mixtelflix. How do you pronounce it? And he's still looking a little cartoony, but not, he's, he's starting to, to look more, uh, more, more human, more elf-like, less, less uncanny valley. This is a classic story. If you've never read this, do yourself a favor. This is one of the absolute all-time great Superman stories. It's also another early Legion of Superheroes appearance that should be included in the uh, collections. It never is, but it's, you know, it's like only like the second or third appearance of some of the members, like Invisible Kid and Shrinking Violet. Uh, it's only like their second or third appearance, you know, very early. 
But uh, anyway, this is uh, Superman is dying of Virus X. And so he, uh, he enlists all of his super pals to, to perform great feats uh, before he goes. He wants to, you know, to see these, these great feats done. And, uh, and so, yeah, that, that, this is a classic. If you've never read the Virus X Superman story, that is an absolute classic of the Silver Age. And let's see what else is in here. There's two books in this bag. And the other one is Superman goes to war for the first time in his life. Well, it's not really because there's a there was an early early Superman story, I think even before Superman number 1 when he was still just appearing in action comics where he grabbed a couple of foreign leaders and uh, <laughs> <laughs> grabbed him right by the scuff of the neck, these two countries that were, war were at war, and it was like, here you go, you two fight it out. Whichever one of you wins, that's the winner. <laughs> uh, this is another classic, Kryptonite Nevermore. The, uh, is this an, I think it's a Neil Adams cover. It doesn't look very Neil Adams-y to me, but at least in the face. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the classic one where... Uh, they do away with kryptonite. Oh, it's also the uh, debut of the uh, Sand Superman, who was kind of a, a big thing for a little while there in the 70s. Now, this one can, uh, can fool you. And I've seen a couple of these recently. I don't know why we've uh, suddenly come across a stash of these. But uh, this is a Pizza Hut giveaway. Uh, and it's... it's Fairly old. I, I believe it's like 1977 or something. This one's in pretty nice shape. But yeah, you could get a comic book at Pizza Hut back in the day. Superman Annual number three with the, the Alfred E. Newman What Me Worry Superman. He's the goofy Superman. These annuals were all reprints. Here's number six. And I think that's got a, yep, Legion on the back, the the Superman family poster on the back. It's another early Jimmy Olsen from the JP collection. Issue number 17. And there's actually three books in this one. I would love to see the first Elastic Lad. Let's see. Nope. There's 14. And... Number 11. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Jimmy's seeing little Tweety Birds. He got his clock run. TNT Olsen. Poor Jimmy. Poor Jimmy. We're getting down towards the end of this box. What else we get here? Lois Lane, 34. And there's number 30. Another Superman's in love with a mermaid. I don't know why. Why the mermaid thing was so big in the uh, 60s. Here's Jimmy Olsen, number 23. Jimmy on KP duty. Jimmy, number 51. The girl with green hair. There's uh, the classic werewolf Jimmy. Number 52. And if you don't know, that is uh, Lois Lane's sister. And it is Lucy Lane. It probably had different mothers, where one is a blonde and one is uh, has black hair. <laughs> or maybe different fathers. No, I think they both had Sam Lane. I don't know when I don't know when Sam Lane was first introduced or mentioned. Here's number 58 of Jimmy. Number 55, we're right in that ballpark. We might see the first Elastic Lad. That would be exciting, for me anyway. There's number 63. Oop, we've switched to gears here. King of Santa? <laughs> would you say ex Santa? How would you pronounce that? Sometimes X sounds like an S, so it's King Santa. <laughs> 42. 
Here's some Tales of the Unexpected with Space Ranger. You do not see much Space Ranger these days. Boss of the Saturnian Legion. Oh, nice. Strange Adventures 144, the Atomic Knights. Love the Atomic Knights. They're before my time, but I uh, I discovered them later. And uh, yeah, that's good stuff. You know, guys in a post-atomic apocalypse wearing medieval knight's armor, riding giant Dalmatians. What's, what's not to love about that? And the artwork was great. The uh, most of the uh, most of the Atomic Knight stories had uh, Murphy Anderson art. There is Strange Adventures one thirty nine, Western comics. Matt Savage. Matt Savage is looking very John Wayne here, don't you think? Don't you think that looks very much like John Wayne? It's not though. It's Matt Savage. Western comics number eighty four. And we've got two of them. Wow. Now weird. Again, one isn't significantly better. Well, actually, no, they're both pretty rough, frankly. Not that I would kick either one out of my collection. Here's a, a Silver Age Catwoman. She had that different uh, costume there at the time. And this is from the uh, depowered phase, Diana Prince Wonder Woman. Here she is uh, looking more heroic, actually Wonder Girl. And it's not Wonder Girl. The Wonder Girl who appeared in Wonder Woman was Wonder Woman as a girl. But Wonder Girl appeared in the Teen Titans because the editor didn't know. <laughs> because there would often be these these stories where where you know Wonder Girl and Wonder Woman would team up and the the editor who put together the Teen Titans didn't know that, you know, he just, I guess he just saw the covers and thought it was a separate character. Didn't know that some Amazon technology, some time travel technology was allowing Wonder Woman to team up with herself as Wonder Girl and as Wonder Tot. There was a, there was a baby version called Wonder Tot. Here is some uh, Deep Power, the new Wonder Woman. Back to World's Finest, Secret of the Time Creature. I don't think we're going to get that Elastic Lad issue of Jimmy Olsen I was hoping for. There's World's Finest 110, 121. World's Finest does not sell all that well on eBay, you know, compared to any other book of the era. And I, I don't know why, but uh, yeah. They just don't seem to be quite as popular as World's Finest 119, 116. It's a funky looking alien. 115. King Superman, King of the Aztecs, 111, or Incas, I don't know. Jughead. It's an early Jughead, number 87. Take the man's word, there's no vanilla. <laughs> well, of course not. It's full of fudgy goos. You wouldn't expect vanilla in a cart of fudgy goos, would you? That guy is looking very uh, wimpy. <laughs> Another Jughead. Hold your horses, Arch. Ha <laughs> ha, get it. Number 76. Number 92, 98, again with the ice cream theme. And we will close out this box, it looks like, with, uh, well, two more books left. Another Adventures of the Jaguar. Don't know what issue number this one is, doesn't say. And then last but not least, Archie's Joke Book number 57. So that's it. That is that box. That's everything I will be grading up for sale on eBay. That was fun. That was a good box. I enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that. Until the next video, hey, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.